Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Before we get going, I wanted to draw your attention to Nancy's book, Learning Contentment. We tend to think being stressed out is a normal state of affairs, and that contentment means sitting back and just bottling things up. For the Christian, however, contentment is something we must apply, work at, and make our own in every circumstance, because anxiety and frustration are not neutral behaviors. In Learning Contentment, Nancy Wilson looks to the Bible and Puritans like Jeremiah Burroughs, Samuel Rutherford, Thomas Watson, and Charles Spurgeon to help us develop the practical, spiritual strength and the perspective that comes from contentment's deep satisfaction with the will of God. Learning Contentment includes concise explanations, application questions, and assignments that will involve and challenge everyone, and lots of biblical wisdom for individuals and groups. Welcome to the Femina Podcast, episode number six. I'm Nancy Wilson. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Samuel Rutherford in case you don't know him yet. He was a 17th century Scottish Presbyterian minister, and he was also a commissioner from Scotland to the Westminster Assembly. A bunch of his letters have been preserved, and they're collected in one big fat volume, and I have never read through that, ladies. I have it on the shelf. Well, it's my husband's copy. And no doubt the whole thing is an immense treasure. But thankfully, in the early 20th century, someone put together just excerpts, some of the really memorable sayings from his letters, and they were put into a little book called The Loveliness of Christ. There is another collection that is probably out of print now called Christ and His Cross. My edition is 1902, and I'm not sure if that was the first printing. Anyway, I do have copies of both of these little books, and I read through them regularly, just maybe a page a day in one or the other. So I'm very fond of of Rutherford's writing. Today, I'm just going to give you a little sample, and never mind that it's really King James English, because this is the way they wrote and spoke in the 17th century. And I was going to read you the entire excerpt from the book, but I'm just going to give you a little, um, just one short section. And that is just one little quote. Here is the quote. Duties are ours, events are the Lord's. Now, there's quite a bit of good theology wrapped up in this simple little quote. Um, He says, it is our part to let the Almighty exercise his own office and steer his own helm. In other words, God is steering this ship, which he himself has made. We are not. And so we are to let, so to speak, we are to assume and admire the providence of God. We're assuming he's the one steering this ship of our lives and the whole world. And duties are what we do. Events are what the Lord does. And so I want to just help you see what a great perspective this is in just living our lives, navigating the events that happen, and assuming our duties in them. When something happens, it's the Lord's doing. You know, sometimes we'll say this is a hard providence. Sometimes we say it is a sweet providence. It's a very good providence, a a great blessing to us, a wonderful providence. My husband calls these right-handed blessings and left-handed blessings, but they're all blessings if we are walking with the Lord. So if it is a left-handed blessing, it's a hard providence. If it's a right-handed blessing, it's what we would call an easy or a a pleasant blessing. Either way, he is working it for our good, whether it's from his right hand or from his left hand. It is all from the Lord. Um, Amos 3.6 says, if there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? God does everything well, the hard things and the good things. I remember being on the way to the hospital when our first grandchild, Knox, uh, was maybe a week, 10 days old. 
and he had had some kind of heart episode. And so my kids were on the way to the hospital. And I remember thinking as I was on my way to pick up Doug so we could get down there and be with them, I was, I remember that came to my mind. It's like, he does all things well. It was clearly an event. <laughs> it was an event. And so we were looking for our duties in it. So oftentimes when hard things happen, we aren't planning for them, but we remind ourselves as quickly as we can, he does all things well. What are our duties in this? Even when it's a right-handed providence or event, when things fall out really well for us, we still have duties and we have to look for them. If God has blessed you with wealth, prosperity, health, good friends, a happy family, a healthy Christian community, a wonderful church, all these blessings must be stewarded carefully and faithfully with grateful hearts. And we must look for our duties in these things. How do we manage? How do we guide the wealth, the prosperity, the health? How do we steward it? How do we use it for good? So in easy providences, there's a lot of stewardship that still needs to happen. And we have to look for our duties. We can't just drift off and hope everything turns out fine. We have to take care. It's like a beautiful garden. You have to steward it or it will get full of weeds, right? You have to water it. You have to weed. You have to just look after it. You may have to fertilize it, etc. So in the best of providences, we have to look for our duties. In the right-handed providence or event, um, that's what we do. And in the difficult events, we have to also steward the hard providence. So we have to look for our duties in the hard providence as well. The goal is to bring God glory in both situations, to bring God the glory in the sweet and the bitter. We look for our duties, and this should just become a habit. We look for our duties because in every event, we have God-assigned duties. We have no control over so many things that happen, but we should look for our duties in each event and not stall out. So let me give you a really homely example. That's the best kind, right? When our kids were in fourth, sixth, and eighth grade, we had a house fire one Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it was very odd. It just broke out, and no one was hurt. Thank the Lord, we didn't actually lose any of our possessions. The firemen were so fantastic. They, they covered things with tarps, etc. So there's a lot of water damage in the house, but we didn't lose any possessions. Not that we had very many impressive ones anyway. Um, but it was clear we couldn't live there. And by the time they had wrapped things up, it was dark, and they took us in with flashlights to get our things for the night. And we moved in with Doug's parents for the night. And uh, I remember, of course, we're living in Doug's parents' house right now, taking care of Doug's 92-year-old dad. But So we go way back with this little house that we're living in. But I remember lying in bed that night, and I think it was probably a double bed that Doug and I were crammed into. And I remember praying something like this. Lord, this just isn't going to work for me. This is not, I can't do this. This is not, this is just not going to work. <laughs> I can't live here while our house gets repaired. It's just like, um, so I remember I had to do a little bit of late night coaching, getting my spirit in order, as you can imagine. God had ordained that fire. That was the event. And it was for me to locate my duties. And fretting about it in the middle of the night was definitely not one of my duties, or telling them that it wasn't going to work for me, <laughs> which is very funny. But I just remember this having to work it out in the night and get under God's feet and thank him for what he was doing and grow up, you know, like it's time to grow up here. And in God's providence, we spent one night there. We went back the next day and, you know, just put things away and whatnot. But it turned out we moved into a really sweet, wonderful temporary place for six weeks while our house was repaired. And, and the Lord turned it into kind of a little mini vacation home. And the kids have many happy memories of that place we call the Pond House. But I'm just saying, my first instinct 
was not to find my duties, but was to complain. And thank the Lord, he shifted my attention. And it's like, we don't get to call the shots, do we? <laughs> and, and so once I got under and once I submitted to it and was grateful, which didn't take all night, you know, it doesn't take long to put things right. Then he blessed us so much. And when we moved back into our house, it was in much better shape than it was, you know, before the fire. So at any rate, that's a small thing. It wasn't like a heavy, horrible trial like many people in our congregation have weathered. We have a church full of people who have weathered all kinds of heavy trials. And I have seen some extraordinary courage and faith in all kinds of difficult circumstances. And the thing is, is we are practicing, we are learning in the little things of how we're going to handle the big ones. And that's what it means to look for our duties. Events are God's. Our lives are in his hands. So when difficulties come, we know who sent them. That's what I mean by good theology. And so we look for our duties in the difficulty. And so what kind of duties? Well, it depends, obviously. In the Silver Chair, Book 4 of the Chronicles of Narnia, Puddle Glum, the Marsh Wiggle, is urging the children to remember the signs that Aslan had given them. And he says this, You see, Aslan didn't tell Paul what would happen. He only told her what to do. In other words, the Lord is in control of the events. When we obey him and we do our duties, God isn't telling us what's going to happen. He's just telling us what we're supposed to do. And that is such a good perspective. In Luke 6, 46 through 48, Jesus says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you who he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. So when we do what Jesus says, when we're obeying God, when we're looking for our duties in all circumstances, it's like having our house built on a really firm foundation. And he, he doesn't promise that floods aren't going to come and the winds aren't going to pound it. But he's saying it's going to stand firm. It's not going to be shaken. And our spirits are not going to be shaken when we are doing what God says, when we're doing our duties. So as Rutherford says, we aren't to quarrel with our maker. We thank him for the providence. We thank him that we have a good savior who's going to provide courage and faith for us in the event that he has brought. We read our Bibles and we trust God. One thing I learned from my dear mother-in-law is that faith is like a muscle. She would say, the more we use it, the stronger it becomes. And the more flexible, I would add, we will be. And we want to be flexible people so that we can adapt to any situation, to any event, and find our duties. And this is really just basic Christian living, and it's very pleasing to God. I mentioned that Doug and I live with his dad, who's 92 because he needs, he needs help. He needs someone to take care of him. But one of the things he mentioned the other day as we were talking about um, just his situation in life right now is he said, well, I can adapt. I can adapt. And I thought, isn't that the truth? You are amazing. He's had a lot of different people live with him, and he adapts. He's adapted to me being there for a couple of years. And that's quite a feat, <laughs> um, bringing him his meals and just taking care of him. And that's, ladies, that's what we want is to be, we want to be the kind of women who can adapt, who are flexible. We're not set in our ways, that we know how to look for our duties in good providences and in hard providences. And we know Christ will meet us there. He will give us the strength to do what he's called us to do. And isn't that just encouraging and such a mercy to know he's never going to leave us or forsake us. So look for your duties today and God bless you in it. Thanks for joining me today.